welcome to this week's update. This is uh, week update number 15. And uh, this is my uh, weekly show where I just kind of put together a mixed bag of stuff in addition to all the little shorts I do during the week. Um, so uh, 15, yeah, we're, uh, we're kind of moving along. This is kind of turned into a ritual. So uh, here we are. And I'll keep going with my weekly show if, uh, as long as you guys like uh, the mixed bag and potpourri of uh, all this. Um, first off, I had a visitor this uh, week, and it was a YouTube visitor, and it's my first one. I've never had anyone uh, email me and request to come uh, see me. Um, now, I don't have his permission to use his last name on the air, and I'm not going to use his YouTube handle because I uh, neglected to obtain his permission. But I will use his first name. His name was Walter. And he came by, uh, he shot me an email, and then he said he wanted to come and see my shop. And we got together and uh, had a good time. We spent several hours together, went out to lunch, and uh, just shop talk, had a good time. So, uh, Walter, thanks for coming by. Uh, you know who you are, and I, I, I'm sorry I didn't get your permission, so I can't, uh, I'm not going to use your YouTube handle or uh, disclose your last name here on the air. But, uh, Walter, thanks for coming by. Uh, next up, uh, Warner Brothers uh, is where we've been working, and unfortunately at Warner Brothers, if you use a video camera, they will put you up against the wall and shoot you. So no video from Warner Brothers, very extensive machine shop, very nice sheet metal shop, and, uh, and this brings me to my next point. We were, we were doing a very large enclosure, and I've... Uh, We've had this topic before, and the topic is what did you say? And what we're doing with this one is we're doing a, a pretty large enclosure um, out of Warner Brothers, and uh, this was a sheet metal enclosure, and there was joints in the system that like this, and there was a piece of sheet metal sandwiched in between them, and then it would get bolted like that. Now, this joint occurred every five feet. This unit was 100 feet long, so uh, this occurred a number of times. And this was on vertical wall panels, and it only occurred at the top. So we had these wall panels that stacked together, and then up top we'd sand they'd sandwich in a piece of metal here. And we'd have another one that sandwich in a piece of metal here. And we had another one that sandwich in a piece of metal here. Well, by the time I got down to the end and we're building all these panels, and I, I caught this just in the nick of time and I started spacing my panels out, but you can imagine tucking a piece of sheet metal in between the tops. My panels started tilting out, and by the time I got out here, I was way out of plumb on this plane. So, uh, or I was going to get out of plumb on that plane, but I, I read the writing on the wall and I saw what was happening and we made adjustments for it in the floor angle and we actually created an intentional gap down the bottom to match as the walls were going together on this thing. Because as we were building, those walls were tipping, 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 tipping. By the time we got to the end, we were going to be so far out of plumb, we had to put a set of doors down at the end and I've got nothing but that to hang doors from. So, Bringing me back to my point, what did you say? I decided to call the engineer that drew this thing and uh, told him exactly what was happening. I told him my walls were getting out of plumb and as I was building, it was getting worse and worse as we were going. And did he make any provisions within the system for that? Did he cut the panels at an angle? Did he do anything to keep that from happening? If there was an inexperienced installer putting that in, they would have had a lot of problems. Um, but the words that came out of the engineer's mouth uh, was he said, that shouldn't give you any problems. You should be able to put that together, any idiot can put that together. Um, sandwiching the sheet metal in between those panels, as you are here, won't have any effect on the how those walls line up uh, and stay in plumb. Because, ready for this, sheet metal has no thickness. So, what did 
did you say? So now this is an ongoing joke uh, around the Bar Z crew. Whenever we have to sandwich a piece of sheet metal in there, you know what, it's going to be okay because sheet metal has no thickness. Okay, moving on. Um, next up, I, uh, a real quick sh sheet metal project. Um, just recently I built a belt car out of aluminum and everyone, I got a bunch of PMs, want to see more sheet metal work, I want to see how I finish my corners, I want to see how I bend my metal, blah. All right, well, sheet metal is a little boring, but uh, this is just a little project for a table here at the shop, how to make a couple of pans. Let's cut to that, and I'll show you what I do with sheet metal. Hey, good morning, guys. Um, I was working on the welding bench a little bit. I gave it, fed it some new wheels, and I thought I would uh, make use of that space <clears throat> down at the bottom where those four uh, square tubes are going around. Uh, I think I want a tray down there for oh, clamps and miscellaneous setup pieces of steel and it'll do two things. It'll give the bench some weight and some mass and it'll give me a good place to store stuff but that's just kind of wasted space down there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up with some actually some removable trays because they're going to get filled with grinding dust and all kinds of junk in there and I'd like to be able to pull them out and dump them. So I'm going to make a few uh, removable trays that go down the bottom of my, uh, my welding bench. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to start with layout and then do some forming and then do a little bit of welding. Okay, so we got our two culprits and we start with uh, just a flat sketch and our finish sizes. And it, it helps when you're forming it to draw an isometric. If you're going to do a quick isometric. So our finish sizes are 20 and a half by 12. Uh, we're doing a hem. That small dotted line there is a hem down each side to give it a little bit of strength. And then we've got opposing uh, returns out here, uh, bent like a Z, to, uh, to catch on the, uh, on the tubing down below. So, it's, so it kind of rests in there. And it's uh, four inches deep. That's two inch tubing, so it's going to hang two inches below. So it's got a, uh, the center of gravity is going to be below the uh, support. And so they're not going to try to bounce around if you're rolling the card around. But it's also helpful to make a flat uh, layout with all your, uh, your hem sizes your, and do dotted lines at all your breaks. So you've got all your finish sizes. It's 12, but then our overall is 21. And just uh, account for all your, all your different returns and such. So... ID, OD, all that, okay? So uh, these are our culprits. Uh, I'm going to get them laid out, and we'll bring you back. Okay, <clears throat> so we've got our two culprits, and I've put some uh, Sharpie <laughs> in the corners. Magnum, all right? Sounds like a condom more than a, uh, a Sharpie, but whatever. Uh, so we did our layout in the corners. Followed our drawing uh, for the <clears throat> um, for the layout, and so we've got these. Now we need. Now we've got a second one, and I'm going to give you a quick tip, and this is going to make things go a lot easier for you if you've got multiples to make. Um, after you scribe your lines in the corners, go ahead and put a little, a very small punch mark in the corners and drill them. Uh, this will. This is going to do two things. The first, first and foremost it's going to relieve the corner when you bend it. So it, that, that gives you a little bit of relief. Second thing is, you can drop this sheet right on top of this sheet. And uh, give it a clamp and just transfer your holes over, um, which, which is going to make things a lot easier. So let me, uh, let me clamp that down real quick. There's one of my pet peeves right there. People that use vice grips and don't close them up when they're done. For some reason that just really bugs me. Okay. So then we just take and uh, take a center punch and get over in our holes. And we're just gonna lightly transfer our holes over. And that, way, that saves us uh, time. We don't have to do layout on uh, 
on the second one. Our first one's ready to corner notch, and our second one is ready to scrub. And here's another good tip: if you drop your scribe right in your punch mark and run your run your square over just till it bumps, press firmly, single scribe. You don't need more than one. Rinse and repeat. When you get old eyes, you find uh, find some uh, tricks to get back on your center punch marks. We're ready to go over and uh, corner notch them. Now, I do not have a corner notcher. I have to do all the corner notches by hand. But uh, uh, we're going to go over and I'll show you how we uh, corner notch those with a uh, unisher. Now, I do most of my uh, corner notching right here on the... Uh, Right here on the brake, and the brake is nice because it'll you bring it down on your uh, on your material, and it holds it securely. You can push on it with a shear and do your work, and uh, it, it kind of holds it for you. So uh, it's either that or clamp it to the edge of a table, but uh, you're just going to want to follow your scribe line. It's going to help you uh, uh, pop that corner out. <laughs> okay, so that's all our shearing done. Uh, next thing we're going to do is uh, on the long side, down this long side, uh, we need to make a scribe line for the hem, and on the short side, we need to make a scribe line for the uh, return, for the little angle that's going to uh, make this uh, tray rest in the uh, uh, on the square tubing. So uh, we, can, we can start here, and from now on, what you do is you measure from your center point out. You don't use your edges to index. Now you're going to measure from the inside out, inside out this way. So. Let's, uh, let's do that. We know we want a uh, four inch deep drawer. This is a pretty easy tool you can make. It's just a piece of sheet metal with a bunch of with a series of holes drilled in it. And this is half inch on the dot. Done. Doesn't hurt to double check yourself though. Make sure you, you need the uh, exactly a half an inch. If you do need to make an adjustment, now's the time to do it. Because the hem is kind of a blind uh, kind of a blind feature. If you have to make an adjustment, you could decrease it or increase it, the thickness of the metal or whatever. I'm running all these at four inch net. This one's going to be rolled over, so it'll be the thickness of the metal taller. And then these have a return, so they're going to be the, the thickness of the metal taller. So I just ran all these at four inches net, uh, net gain on the bends. All right. So now we're scribed and we're ready to hem. I think, uh, and you need to plan your bends carefully. If you're doing double returns and things like that, uh, bends can get in your way. So you have to be very careful of which ones you bend first and which ones you bend last. And our hems are actually going to go on um, the apron break because we want the thickness of the metal included in the four inch. So we're going to bring that scribe line right out to the 
to the apron break, not to the die. Ooh, looks like my handle's gonna bump the camera. It is. Let me move you guys around a little bit. There, I think you can see the whole break that way. All right, coming up. Uh, this is a hem, so we're gonna go past 90 and bury it down into the, into the die. Then all we're gonna do is lift and just push it back under the die and crimp. And this is what you're left with. Do a nice smooth edge on the top, nice and straight. Gives it added strength right there for the edge of the box or whatever you're building. Uh, but that's just a simple hem. Uh, let's do the other hem. Side's done. Next. This one's coming down on uh, apron break. This one's coming down on die break. These are going to be our returns for uh, the shelf. These are both going die break. Bend is to pull the ends up. And I've already set up over on this side of the brick to do that. And this is where we get our pan, thus the pan break or box break. We get our box, and these are going on the uh, the scribe line going to the die. Or no, I, I'm sorry, the apron. Apron break. And here we come up on our box. And when you do this kind of work, you're never going to get this part of it full full 90. You always got to take it on a bench and bop it around because you're going to bump right here and then your spring back. You're always going to have a small amount of spring back. So you need to get it over on the table rubber mallet, knock it around, and get that last few degrees out of there. So you can see how far you can bend it. But we can't get it all the way in tight there, so you just got to kind of knock this around uh, because of the spring back of the material. All right, let's do the other side, and we've got a complete box. And then 
as you can see, the limiting factor of a brake and the depth of a pan you can build is right here. And that this is called the throat of the machine. Uh, this one's six inch. So I could build a pan six inches, basically six inches deep uh, because of the clearance between here and the apron brake uh, line. But there you have it. There's a completed tray. Uh, just needs to have the corners welded. Okay, and we've, uh, we've got our joint prepared. I've already done my hammer. You can, you can see the fit up we got there. It's a pretty nice fit. But And the order we're going to do this in is we're just going to give it a light tack on the outside, right at the top. And then if, if the center is bowed, we might give it a little light tack in the center. And then we're going to go inside, and we're going to completely weld the inside. Now, I don't know if you noticed or not, but uh, this is galvanized material, and I've ground all galvanized off. I'm not going to say that makes galvanized safe to weld, because nothing makes galvanized safe to weld. There is a gas that gets emitted from, uh, from galvanized when you weld it. Perhaps you've heard of it. It's called cyanide. Uh, so, well ventilated. Uh, try to prevent the, your welder sickness. Uh, lots of milk at the end of the day. Whole milk is a uh, good cure. Helps your body dispose of uh, any cyanide that you may have ingested. Uh, so... Uh, Light tacks on the outside, full weld on the inside. Then we're going to come back and do this, uh, this outside here. So uh, um, let me get geared up, and we'll do a little bit of that. Okay, so here's immediately after welding, and this is just welded outside for now. Uh, right now, if you were to grind that, you'd probably break the seam. We're going to follow it up with a weld inside before grinding, and it really doesn't matter whether you weld the inside or the outside first. Uh, it just really, 
Uh, it doesn't make any difference what, what order you do it in. But uh, right now it's just uh, just an outside weld. And those are going to get cleaned and uh, welded on the inside for strength. Uh, then we're free to grind the outside and doll them up. All right, be right back with that. Okay, so I thought I'd show you the corners before and after grinding. Well, this is uh, just a rough weld. And we, uh, I came in with a hard disc and just did some general shaping. So that's kind of the rough grind. Then you come back with a flap wheel and give it a final polish. And that's what your corner looks like after a final. And all our, I mean, basically we've ground all the weld away out here. We've just made us for a smooth corner. And all of our strength is inside where we, we're not touching that weld. We're just going to run a putty knife and a wire brush in there and uh, scrape the dingle balls off and uh, paint it and call it good. But the outside uh, has got a nice square edge. And like I said, you shape it and polish it with a, uh, uh, you know, start with a hard disc and then move on to the, uh, the flap wheel variety. This is, a, I think this is an 80 grit flap. Yeah, this is an 80 grit flap wheel. So uh, you go from this to this in one step. All right, but uh, that's basically how our trays fit in there, in the bottom, and they, uh, you know, they slide back and forth. They're easily removed, so we can dump the the junk out of them after they get filled up with grinding dust and welding spatter. And I think I'm actually going to relieve these corners, just bring them in 45. And uh, I've got a couple nice trays down there to uh, throw my clamps and uh, various welding sundries. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Okay, so uh, a little bit of prep, a little bit of scraping, a little bit of uh, cold galvanize in the corners. And I trimmed these at a, I lobbed those off at a 45 so we don't have a sharp edge sticking out there. So we've got, uh, got a pretty nice pan in there for putting stuff. Hey, look at that. All right, so we've got trays for scraps of uh, steel and clamps and all that crap in there can start going uh, down under the welding table. Well, that wad of stuff can go under there too. That's everything that stays with a welding bench. So there's quite a bit of stuff that uh, we can fill that up with. Alrighty, thanks for watching. All right, uh, next up is uh, we got shark cages going. Second round. And we've already delivered the first round. Here's a, here's a quick cut to what they look like. Uh, we're going to all paint it up and wheel and ready to deliver. And here's our first batch of shark cages. Actually, getting loaded in the trailer and heading out tomorrow. Those wheels are a 5 inch cast iron hub ball bearing, double row ball bearing swivel uh, with a locking swivel as requested by the customer. So, um, yeah. All right, well, there's our first, first batch of shark cages heading out the door. I'm back, and uh, we've got the next batch. Uh, and I'll just take a look around at those. Those are, in, uh, those are all sub assemblies now. Some more sub assemblies for uh, shark cages for this week. That's this week's batch. So there's the uh, stack of bases. These already have the nut certs in them. Uh, just waiting on the sides to get welded together. And that'll happen Monday, Tuesday. And we've got a small dust collector job to do. I got we got 40 feet of uh, 10 inch pipe to run. Uh, low pressure Y, long radius elbow, and there's a couple of duct gates in that box right there. And those so those have to go into a a wood dust collection system this coming week, so that's coming up. And back, 
And uh, so shark cages are getting real popular around here. And we've embellished on our bender a little bit, as you can tell. We still have, we're still forming them hot, but the results are good. We're getting very little crush on the uh, on the uh, on the tubing. So yeah, we're pretty happy with those. Um, and that's about it for my week. Uh, a bunch of stuff I can't show you because it's Warner Brothers, and I'm not allowed to put the camera in there. And I would love for you to see that machine shop. Very extensive and uh, first class setup over the Warner Brothers Studios. And Warner's interesting because they pretty much make everything. I mean, they needed an emblem for a Fiat. They didn't go to the Fiat dealer and buy an emblem for a Fiat. They made an emblem for a Fiat. I sat there and watched it. Uh, he made it out of wood and then he laminated it with something painted it, and by the time he was done, it looked like an emblem for a Fiat, but he probably had 12 hours into it, and he could have gone down to Fiat and bought the emblem for $17. But, uh, yeah, that's what studios do. If they need it, they make it. I got some outgoing uh, this, this last week, and I got some uh, squares out to some people uh, that include it, but are not limited to. Herb, Ray, Colin, Greg, and Owen all have squares coming at them. Some of you guys are out of the country, and it's going to take a little while to get them. I know a few of the local guys have already received them, but uh, they all went out the same day, so uh, squares just went, <coughs> went out in a zillion different directions. So more bars these squares are uh, headed out the door. All right, guys, that's my week. Uh, appreciate you tuning in. And uh, I'm signing off for now. I want you to enjoy the rest of your weekend. And uh, have a good week uh, coming up. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye. What I'm doing here is I'm putting, putting the scribe line right on the edge of the fingers. And I'm ignoring the actual brake line. And we're going to... We're going to bend this one over hard. I'm going to check make sure my stop's not put on. We're going to roll this one way past 90. Unbelievable.